Right, uh, we're going to try this again. I hope there's sound. I'm just going to wait for some folk to get online and uh, just tell me if there is sound. I would today like to speak a little bit on uh, the bruising. Why did the Father uh, bruise Jesus? And uh, that's what it sounds like, the Bible says. And why would the Father beat on folk? <clears throat> you know, so um, I just see John, you just got on. John uh, Fazio, can you just tell me if you receive any sound? Uh, I would appreciate that. So I don't want to preach a whole message and then you guys don't get any sound. So um, that seems to me there's no sound again. If anybody can see, uh, just let me know if there's any sound on this. I would like to know um, if there's sound. My gosh, there's no sound. Okay, thank you, John. <clears throat> I appreciate that. Okay, um, I'm going to talk on just this this chastisement. You know the uh, the penalty substitution system. Why the Father? Why the Bible says that it, it pleased the Father to bruise Jesus, and did it really please the Father to bruise Jesus and and all of those kind of things? Now I want to read from Isaiah 53, and let us just have a look at that. Isaiah 53 from the King James translation says. Yet it pleased the Lord to bruise him. He has put him to grief. When you shall make his soul an offering for sin, he shall see his seed, he shall prolong his days, and the pleasure of the Lord shall prosper in his hand. He shall see of the travail of his soul, and shall be satisfied by his knowledge. As shall my righteous servant justify many, for he shall bear their iniquities. So <clears throat> what he's saying here is that um, it basically, and this is how I've, I've seen this, uh, is that it pleased the Father to send Jesus and even to go through hard times to save man. And that is what I've see, how, I've, well, how I saw that. So it pleased the Father to say, it's like when I go on a mission trip, you know, I, I'm sure it, it, even if I go through some difficult times, discomfort on an airplane, this, that, whatever, the Father is, the Father is not saddened by that. He's pleased because he knows what it's going to mean for other folk. Now, <clears throat> that's the one, one way of looking at it. The other way of looking at it is from a penal substitution system wherein uh, somebody took the, the, the um, was the substitute, where, talking about the righteousness of God, wherein he would basically beat up or want to punish with death, and then he gave Jesus so that um, Jesus could be punished with our death, where he actually received our beating, our whipping. That is what basically, uh, that is what I, what I traditionally heard as well. This system where God is in heaven, he really gets upset when Adam sinned, and then he had to come and beat up on some people, and when he beat up on some people, and, and, they, and he punishes with death, then he can be satisfied. And man, it, you know, that system doesn't even make sense at all. It doesn't make sense. Um, that's the one view. And then the other view is, what if, and I think this is more uh, towards the truth, what if God says, man, I see my people are being beaten by sin, they are being tortured by death, they are, being, they are going through a very hard time, and what if I, if, if, if I can cleanse them from that without a system wherein... Um, wherein the father punishes anybody or where the father finds joy even in the pain that Jesus goes through to save us or any of those things. Um, what if that is the truth? Now, I think that is more what the Bible actually talks about. Now, I'm going to read from a different translation, and this is, um, for those of you that like to study, go to Esau and you can, you can download what is called the Apostolic Bible Polyglot. Now, what that is, is it's different translations of the Old combined with the Septuagint, and they've put Greek words to the Old Testament letters with Strong's numbers. And from that, and that is how they've put this thing together. And uh, I would like to read to you what that translation says. It says, And the Lord willed to cleanse him of the beating. So it doesn't say God was pleased to see him beaten. This translation says, um, this was God's will, to cleanse him from the beating. Now, I believe what happened is when God looked at Adam from the day that he sinned, 
Adam was at a place where he was being beaten by sin and death and fear and torture and all those kind of things. And um, it doesn't matter how God tried to approach man in the Old Testament, they were always afraid. They were always seeing fear and pain and death. And so many of the writings you can see in, in the Old Testament, any, anything negative, people would assign it to God. God is punishing me. God is putting me through this hard time. God is putting me through that hard time. Or He's trying to teach me. There's always some wickedness behind God. Um, when, when you look at it from a, an unenlightened perspective. And then God said, let me come and show you a word. Let me come and show you who I really am. And He became flesh. And then dwelt amongst us. And as he dwelt amongst us, he's shown us his intent in every verse in the Bible. And what we see in Isaiah here is, and this is the reason God did it, because he wanted to cleanse us from the hurt and the pain and the bitterness and the fear of death. He wanted to cleanse us from that. So this is how it took place. And this is my view on this. God said, let me um, become a man. And Jesus was without sin. And because he was without sin and he incarnated a human body um, and also lived by the persuasion in his heart, he could go into a human body or he could go as a human to the baptism of John and look at certain rituals, Old Testament rituals and everything, which would have some... Oh my gosh, I think, think we lost internet there. I hope you guys are still there. Um, uh, so so what, what happens and what takes place there is that God comes and he says, I will believe that I am carrying the sin of the world. And when Jesus went and was baptized by John, he said, I believe I am the scapegoat. I'm the one that carries all of your life. So in other words, what happened was when Jesus came to the earth and he took all everything on him. He believed that he was 100% like us. He believed that he carried the sin of the world by his heart. And you know, as if God believes something, it is so. As a man believes in his heart, he is like that. So here Jesus comes, he carries the sin of the world, he carries all those things, and he is at a place where we see the end of the belief system of works and fear and everything. And he comes to a place where he can only be described as fully cursed, fully sin, hanging upon a cross, dying. And then when the Father saw Jesus in that pain and torture, this was the will of the Father, to cleanse him from the beating. Because he was now the last Adam. He was representing and he was not just representing, he was carrying all your pain and all your hurt and all your discomfort. And it was the will of the Father to cleanse him from the beating. So how could the Father cleanse him and how could the Father cleanse us from everything that destroys us? Is when this Jesus could come and live the fullness of the curse that we have, and even the end of that curse, which is the maximum of it, which is death. And the Father could raise him up without sin, manifesting without sin. What's the next thing? You know, he would also be without death. So it pleased the Father to cleanse Jesus from everything he became in the, in the context of sin and death, the beating and all that. So he wanted to cleanse him. That's what he wanted to do. So I'm going to read again. See, some of you ask who this is. The Apostolic Bible Polyglot with Strong's Numbers. It says, And the Lord willed to cleanse him of the beating. If you should offer for a sin offering the thing for your life, he shall see a seed long lived. And the Lord willed by his hand to remove misery of his soul, to show to him light and to shape in the understanding to justify the just one, the good one, serving many. So what he says here, if you could come and justify Jesus with eternal life, and if Jesus could have your life, it, that, that pleasing thing in the heart of the Father was to cleanse Jesus from sin, to cleanse Jesus from our death that he took upon him. For if he could cleanse Jesus from that, and Jesus came with my sin and my death, you know what happens? He's cleansed you. So it pleased the Father. It didn't please the Father to beat Jesus. 
it pleased the Father, um, and let me read it again, and it, um, verse 10, and the Lord willed to cleanse him of the beating. You know, it's God's will to cleanse you from your suffering. It's God's will to cleanse you from your sin. It's God's will to cleanse you from the torture and the hard times and the fear of death. It's God's will to cleanse us from physical death. That is His will. He doesn't want us to live like that. It's God's will to cleanse us from all these things. And, and He came and He has shown His will in Jesus. He has shown His will. He saw Jesus. Jesus took all sin, everything upon Him. And we could see the will of the Father as pertaining to all sin and all death. That is to raise you up without sin, without death. And when we can see that, and we can see that we are united with that since He didn't have His own sin and His own death, but ours. You know what that means? That means our heart. All of a sudden, God can now have access to our heart where we can believe that that is God's will for me and we can see not just that it is it's will for me but we can see what he has already done with the very thing that destroys me and as we believe upon that we find as Jesus didn't try and move a finger to save his own life when he was hanging upon the cross we don't move a finger to try and save our own lives from sin and death we trust the father in a powerful expectation of what he will bring forth and what we see then is we see the Father bring forth what we call the fruit of the Spirit. And we see Him doing what that verse says in our lives. It's the will of the Father. It's the will of the Father to cleanse us from the beating. As you've been beaten by guilt and condemnation and, and hatred and bitterness, uh, uh, unhealthy love for money, uh, sexual immorality, you've been beaten by that. What does He come? He starts to cleanse you from that. That is His will. <laughs> Glory to God. And it will end in the full manifestation of you even being cleansed from physical death um, when Jesus manifests the fullness of His glory in the earth. And you will see the graves opening up and God cleansing us from that beating. Amen. Glory to the Father. That is the love that the Father has for us. And it pleased the Father. It's the will of the Father to cleanse you. Now, you can go the other way around and say, you know, that God was willing, it pleased Him to give His Son. And even when His Son was going through these hard times, you know, he, for the joy set before Him, He endured the cross. We can see all of that. And I absolutely believe in that. I just believe that just bringing a little bit of a different perspective can help our hearts to just fully trust our Abba. Thank you so much. You are deeply loved. Uh, you are uh, the apple of his eye. He loves you. He cares for you. I declare to you that God has removed the beating and he actively manifests that in your life today. Amen.